Hi folks, how are you okay today? It's uh, good to be with you and love to everybody out there. I'm just going to pray. My website's jasonburnspreacher.com jasonburnspreacher.com and you can get me on Facebook and Twitter and I just want to make a, a final video on this annihilationism and just finish it off. I know we've done a heck of a lot of material on it but uh, I believe it's important that we do so so let's pray. Father, we come before you today. Father, we don't have all the answers and we seek to follow you, Lord. and We seek to please you and we seek to bring glory to you. And Father God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your love and I thank you for your grace and I acknowledge my guilt and sin. Lord, I just pray, as I share your word and as I share my concerns, Father, I just pray it might be a help to people. Confess any weakness in me, any anything that's not right, anything that's not of you. Forgive me, Lord, of my failure, my sin. And I ask that you forgive me. And I come before you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi folks, I, I want to finish off this series that I've done on Annihilationism. I know many of you who follow my videos, you're probably thinking, Jay, you've done a lot of videos on Annihilationism. Well, I just want to say that it was not my plan to do so. I've never really homed in on a, a heresy and... and critiqued it as much as I have on this on this teaching so it's not it's not something that I planned it was not something on my agenda but uh, a, a, a dear dear brother a dear dear brother um, who I care a, a great deal about as in as imbibed this kind of teaching and um, fortunately he he is going to start to think about it more and look at a different way of thinking he's going to read uh, I think Francis Chan's book on the doctrine of hell so so I'm really pleased about that um, but I, I believe that God has wanted me looking back now over the videos that I've made I, I believe that God wants me to to, or, or I believe that God wanted me to do those videos because studying this doctrine which has been opposed in orthodoxy on the doctrine of hell um, a few things came to light one is that there's not actually a lot of material critiquing annihilationism so secondly there's a lot of new ideas coming out at the moment, the last few years, attacking the doctrine of hell. And a lot of evangelicals are following suit. So I think it's been timely to do quite a few videos on this, to, to arrest the drift that is going in a wrong direction. So it's just a, a small contribution to defending the truth, really. And I think that a lot of... Um, there are a lot of these uh, annihilationists pumping their propaganda on the internet and so I think it was important to, to counteract that. So there's quite a lot of material on it but I think there's there was a need for it because evangelicals are seem to be drifting in this direction. Okay. So I just want to start with... Um, The book of Jude, <clears throat> it says, For there are certain men crept in on the words who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. 
I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he had reserved in everlasting chains, under darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in the manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the, the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally are brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and run greedily after the error of Balaam, for reward and perish in the gainsaying of Kor. These are spots in your feast, charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit therein, fruit therein, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness for ever. And Enoch also, the seventh of Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers and complainers walking after their own lusts, and their mouths speak of great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the word which was spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you threefold by mockers in the last time. Sorry, how that you, they told you there should be mockers in the last time who would walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves sensual, have not the spirit, but you, beloved, build yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourself in the love of God for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life and if you turn to uh, 2 Timothy to Timothy chapter 3 says this know that in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves calpinous boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth-based breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jams, James and Jamborees withstood Moses, so these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecution, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Listeria, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Ye, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast heard of knowing of whom thou hast learned them and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, 
for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I charge, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the quick and the dead, at the appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all unsuffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they will turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And then if you turn to Galatians chapter 1, it says, uh, verse 3, Grace and peace be from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And we said before, so say I again, If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men, or God, or do I seek to please men? For yet I please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither perceived it of man, neither was I taught it but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So, in those scriptures, it will warn that in the last days, men will have itching ears and seek Bible teachers that will feed their itching ears. And over the last 30 years, we've seen many, many evangelicals collapse and listen to false teachers because they have itching ears the people have swayed been swayed by teachers who are feeding their itching ears and a couple of the things that evangelicals are listening to is they people naturally uh, struggle with the doctrine of hell that God will punish people forever so in this concern by God's people, many evangelicals, disturbed by it, are looking to Bible teachers that will give them teaching that doesn't teach eternal torment. And they want these Bible teachers because they have itching ears, they, they cannot stomach the doctrine of hell, so they're looking for teachers that will torn things down. And... There are teachers coming who are feeding and downgrading the Bible and uh, the doctor, sound doctrine with annihilationism and universalism. And what they're doing is, 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 is they are pandering to the itching ears and they are watering down the gospel. And if you listen to this teaching and if you listen to you your, your emotions you will be taken down with heresy. And that's the first point that I want to make. The reason why a lot of people are turning to annihilationism and are moving away from evangelicalism and the gospel where Christ was punished for our sin and where Christ uh, where was saved from eternal torment. The reason why evangelicals and many people are leaving that doctrine is, is not because it's not taught in the Bible it's because of emotion. It's because of feeling. People feel that it's not just that it's not just that people will be sent into eternal torment, and they f they think it, it's terrible, and I and I just don't think it's right, and so therefore I feel this. Or here's a Bible teacher, and here's my Bible, and I I, I can see teaching that gets rid of the doctrine of hell because basically emotionally I don't like that doctrine. It doesn't seem just to me. This is the kind of thinking and argument that people are bringing in their minds and in the end what, you, what you're doing is you're, you, this is an argument from emotion. 
And that is what brought Eve down. She reacted to her senses, to her emotion. God said, don't do this. Uh, don't eat this tree. But uh, Eve believed her emotions. She believed the devil's lies and, and her emotions and went with them. And in the end, she rejected the word of God. And our, my first point is on this doctrine of hell, it might be difficult for you. It might be really, really hard for you to accept. And I understand that. But the first question is, is it in the Bible or not? And if it is in the Bible, you have to believe it. And it doesn't matter what your emotions are feeling. It's what the Bible teaches. It's what God's word teaches. And if God's word teaches it, you have to abide by the word of God. When Jesus was taking on the devil and the devil was tempting him, Jesus quoted the word of God. The devil said this and Jesus quoted the Bible back at the devil. And you have to stand against these voices that are coming in and telling you that hell is not just. You've got to stand against that and say, no, I'm following what the Bible says. Because if you don't, if you go off emotion, you're going to sh make shipwreck your faith. Now, a lot of these, and I, I've listened to these annihilationist debaters, uh, Ford, Edward Fudge and Chris Date, and they claim to be evangelical. They say the right language, the right doctrine, but then they say, we just believe everything you believe, but we don't believe in, in the doctrine of hell. They even quote orthodox scholars like Asi Spruill and John MacArthur to back up their point. These people do not agree with annihilationism, but the annihilationists will use these evangelical scholars to make the position look palatable to you so that you'll take it on board. They claim to be orthodox, but they're not. Chris Date, a major debater for annihilationism, has strange views concerning soul sleep. That the, 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 the soul is asleep, uh, which, which cannot be justified in the Bible. He has strange views about that. Edward Fudge is on record as saying that he believes that Christ's uh, body was annihilated. If you believe that, that has uh, big consequences on your doctrine of Christ, who Christ is. And, and you're not in the orthodox camp if you're attacking the, the uh, orthodoxy of, of, of the deity of our Lord Jesus. So these people will claim to be orthodox, but if you scratch hard enough and look deep enough, there's serious issues with their theology. Even though they claim to be exactly the same, they're not. You see... They'll even claim that they're trying to be biblical, but the reality is they're emotional. The reality is they don't like the doctrine of hell. And they'll say, no, that's not the issue. They'll tell you that what we believe is the Bible. That, and, and they'll try to get you to believe that, that all they want to do is follow the Bible and the Bible teaches annihilationism. But the reality is, I'm not saying they're lying, but they're, they're kidding themselves. The reality is they emotionally do not like the doctrine of hell so they go to the Bible and find annihilationism to suit their feelings. That's what's behind all this annihilationism. It's not a desire to be biblical. It's an emotional reaction. It's an emotional reaction. Now they're on record in debates of saying we don't want to react to emotion. What we'll do is we'll follow the Bible. They're on record of saying that. But the reality is, it's not about the Bible. It's about their emotion. They don't like the doctrine of hell. It's not. It doesn't seem just to them. Now, this issue of it's not just... It comes down to revelation or human reason. If you go from human reason, it will not seem just to you. But if you go by revelation and allow the Spirit of God to teach you, 
and study the word of God in its context and what the word of God says about hell then you'll accept it because it's based on revelation but if you us at revelation with reason you will not accept what the Bible says because you've moved from following what the Bible says to human reason and again a lot of this rejection of the doctrine of hell when all said and done all the Bible quotations from the annihilationists that they throw out and they'll throw out hundreds of verses and you as a sincere person who's been taken in with this teaching you have to be honest it's not really about the Bible it's about your emotion and that's a dangerous position to be in it's about you following human reason rather than following the pure Word of God really ultimately that's where it's at I've seen in my own experience being at two theological seminaries I've seen theologians and lecturers and pastors and students where they've exalted human reason when they've studied the Bible and they've made shipwreck their faith and they've shipwrecked a whole generation of churches and leaders and theologians all because they've exalted human reason it's a very very dangerous place to be the Jehovah's Witness when they study the Bible uh, they, cl they, they come across as if they're biblical but really it's just human reason it's not based on the Word of God and the Holy Spirit it's based on the watchtower teaching and rationalism and they too believe in annihilationism so it's very very difficult to understand how people can go to hell for eternity but it's if you humble yourself and allow the Spirit of God to teach you then you can accept it if you understand the biblical perspective and I just want to say if you go to uh, Matthew chapter 5 Um, just I'm just fine, trying to find it. I just I just get it. I just get it. I just can't remember. So I have to keep warning you. So we'll get the verse for you. So before we even begin, I have to make these warnings because if you, if I don't and you, you follow and listen to these kind of teachers, so sorry, Matthew Matthew seven. Matthew seven. Fifteen to twenty. It says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth uh, evil fruit. A good tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A, a, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not for fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire so here it's telling you how you can see which are the true teachers and false teachers what fruit do they bear well look at the history of the church two thousand years of history where has been the blessed fruit the blessed fruit has been with those who've taught the doctrine of eternal torment Jonathan Edwards was used in a great revival he taught the doctrine of eternal torment. George Whitfield, he was used in a great revival. He taught the doctrine of eternal torment. John Wesley, he was used in a great revival. He believed and taught the doctrine of eternal torment. Throughout the history of the church, the fruit has been and the blessing has been in revival on the doctrine of eternal torment. 
The annihilationists throughout history have never been blessed. Their fruit has been barren. In fact, if you look at the history of annihilationism, it generally makes the church become secular and heretical. That's been the fruit of annihilationism throughout history. Go and read B.B. Um, Warfield on annihilationism and then look up some of the people he mentions uh, on the doctrine of annihilationism in the history of it and, and find out their biographies and see how they corrupted the church. Their fruit has not borne good fruit. But the doctrine of hell has borne good fruit. It's been used mightily in great revivals. Secondly, uh, so why I am not an, uh, an annihilationist, it says beware of, of, of false prophets. And I'm not an annihilationist because of the fruit. The fruit of annihilationism is it brings secularism to the church. It destroys the church. In the 19th century, the churches that imbibed this annihilationism were destroyed. They, they, they became secular. Leaders who continue to teach this and pass it on to their leaders and then the leaders, generation after generation of annihilationism, it leads to secularism. So the fruit has not been good. That's why I'm not an annihilationist. Okay? Their fruit is bad. The fruit of those who have preached the doctrine of hell has been blessed. God has blessed them mightily. Jonathan Edwards, George Whitfield, and the great John Wesley were mightily blessed. Secondly, I'm not an annihilationist because it will it 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 destroys holy living. In one Peter it says, "Be ye holy, for I am holy." But if you teach annihilationism, then you can go and live a sinful life. You can go and live an ungodly life and all that will happen to you is you get annihilated. So there's no consequences for your actions. So annihilationism will in encourage people to live ungodly lives. And you can see that today where annihilationism is taught or you and universalism, where the uh, doctrine of eternal torment is not taught, people begin to live ungodly lives. They begin to live w uh, worldly lives. You can see that with the churches today where they don't eat, they, they might believe in the doctrine of hell, but they don't teach it. You can see how worldly the churches have become. So I'm, I don't believe in annihilationism because, number one, the, the, the fruit is bad. It secularizes the church. Number two, it, it destroys holy living and makes people live unholy lives. Whereas the doctrine of hell encourages people and 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 emboldens people to live a holy life thirdly i'm not an annihilationist because it's a doctrine that destroys the deity of christ and his atoning work the annihilationists focus in their debates on the death of christ which is right it says in Romans chapter 6 at the end, uh, the free gift of God is eternal life, but the wages of sin is death. But they never focus on the suffering of Christ and that he suffered for his people. In Isaiah 53, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. So the annihilationist take away the suffering of Christ and what he did for us at the cross in all his fullness, that he suffered for hell-deserving sinners. When the Lord was in Gethsemane and he prayed, he, he, he had great sweats of blood, he was whipped and mocked and he had a crown of thorns put on his head, he was suffering for us. I'm not an annihilationist because it takes away from the suffering of Christ. I'm not an annihilationist because it uh, attacks the deity of Christ. You see, Edward Fudge, one of their main propagators of this teaching believes that Christ's body was annihilated his, his human side was annihilated if that's the case when Christ died you're saying that the the human side of Christ i.e. his soul was separated from the deity of Christ and we believe that Christ has two natures in one 
So you're saying if Christ's human nature was annihilated, he was separated from his divine nature. You're into really, really bad heresy. So I'm not an annihilationist because it has bad fruit. I'm not an annihilationist because it encourages people to live an ungodly life. I'm not an annihilationist because it attacks the atoning work of Christ and the deity of Christ. Number four, I'm not an annihilationist because they're not honest about church history. They say that the early church taught annihilationism. And that they weren't clear. Clement of Rome, book 7, chapter 35, 27, 98, says, So then, if they were sure of this, that the punishment of eternal fire awaits those who do not worship God, when would they cease warning and exhorting? Justin Martyr, in 155 AD, in Second Apology, chapter 9, sorry, 1 to 165 AD, said, he lived to that age, but 155 AD, um, said and that no and that no one may say what is said by those who are redeemed philosophers that our assertion that the wicked are punished in eternal fire are big words and bugbears and that we wish men to live virtuously through fear and not because such a life is good and pleasant I will briefly reply to this that if this be not so God does not exist, or if he exists, he cares not for men, and neither virtue nor vice is anything. And as we said before, lawgivers unjustly punish those who transgress good commandments. And we can go to uh, Archelaus, Acts of Disputation, uh, Hippolytus against Plato, Cyprian of Carthage, uh, John of Chrysostom, John Chrysostom, um, John at uh, Cassine, Augustine, and we could go on and on and on of looking at many, many uh, early church fathers that believed in uh, the doctrine of hell. And it was a good quote there by Justin Martyr because he's saying the doctrine of hell shows that God cares for men. He cares for what's right and what's wrong. But if, in that, if there is annihilationism, there is no real justice, but we'll get onto that in a minute. So... I'm not an annihilationist because they represent church history in a bad way and falsify church history as if annihilationism was taught on the same level as the doctrine of hell in the early church and throughout history and that is a complete lie and they misrepresent the history of the church. I'm not an annihilationist because they misrepresent and misinterpret the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, if you look at the word Sheol, it means death, but it also is a place where the wicked go. The annihilationists concentrate on verses which say in the Old Testament that men will be destroyed. But they don't look at all the verses where in Sheol it talks about the wicked will go to Sheol. And they don't and, and, and they read into their verses annihilationism. Annihilationism is that people die, people are judged, uh, resurrected then they are judged, then they are annihilated. That's four things. In any verse that the annihilationists quote from the Old Testament, they cannot find that fourfold chronology in any verse. So what they're doing is reading their annihilationism into the Old Testament. But the Old Testament clearly, clearly states, clearly states that the wicked go to Sheol. It's a place where they go. And... Uh, so I'm not an annihilationist because they get the Old Testament wrong. And they, 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 they consistently use the Old Testament on a linear perspective. They don't realize that the Old Testament is progressive revelation. And they have to take the, the Old Testament in that context. And, and realize that the Old Testament gives us the fullness of the doctrine of hell. The New, Tes uh, the, the New Testament gives us the fullness of the doctrine of hell. The Old Testament... Uh, gives us um, uh, a little bit of understanding. But what they do is they, they say that the Old Testament is the final understanding of the doctrine of hell. And then they use this as a more authoritative than the New Testament. If you look at their debates, they often make the Old Testament more authoritative than the New Testament. But they're both authoritative, but they're in different perspectives. The Old Testament is the seed and the New Testament is the flower. 
And in these debates, they don't let the New Testament speak in its all its fullness on the doctrine of hell. Final, uh, next, I'm, I don't believe in annihilationism because in the New Testament and in the Old Testament, they only cherry pick the Bible verses that suit them. They don't look at all the Bible verses. And if you look at all the Bible verses, so they, they cherry pick uh, John 3.16, For God so loved the world, uh, that if, if you believe in him, um, you have everlasting life. If you don't believe in him, you'll perish. They cherry pick verses like this, but then forget in John chapter eight at the uh, John chapter three at the end. He says this in John chapter three at the end. It says, "He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son." shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Mino means continually abide. It doesn't mean annihilation. So they cherry pick. They pick a verse in John chapter 3, uh, verse 16, that says so, uh, eternal life and perish. And say, look, perish means annihilation. But then they uh, skip the verse later on that explains it, saying it's the wrath of God abideth. Mino, continually. And they do it time and again. If you look at... Uh, Matthew chapter 10 uh, verse 28 which is their favorite text Matthew 10 Matthew 10:36 10, at uh, 10 28 sorry it says and fear them which kill the body but fear uh, fear not able to kill the soul and rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell and they take these passages out of context anyway, but they cherry pick just this verse. They, do, uh, they don't look at other verses like Luke 16. They'll just explain that away where it's talking about a guy in hell uh, being in torment. And they'll just ignore that and say, no, that's a parable. And yet, they'll cherry pick and say, this, this teaches annihilationism when actually it says kill the body and then it says destroy soul and body in hell the, the word kill is not the same as destroy destroy is not the word, same word as kill Thayer uh, looks at this word destroy as in destroy as in um, like I, I, I get this book and I just destroy it I rip it up but it doesn't mean it's it's been annihilated or disintegrated um, uh, J.P. Holden notes that this is in the context of the Pharisees answering the Pharisees' attack. They believed in an eternal torment. So in the historical context, that would suggest that this means eternal torment. And even if, it, even if you go with that this means kill, the word destroy means kill, it still doesn't mean annihilation because all the other clear scriptures around it, like if you look at uh, Matthew 28, where it's the parable of the virgin, and the virgins are, who don't have enough oil are locked out of heaven. They're not uh, let in, but they're not destroyed, they're not annihilated. So even if this passage, passage taught kill body and soul in hell, it wouldn't, uh, it, 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 it wouldn't be, it, it would be contradicted by other clear scriptures, so it can't mean that. It's a wrong interpretation of that verse when you look at it, all the clear verses and it says in hell so that's a place it's a place if you're talking about annihilationism you just you can just be disintegrated in two seconds so why is it talking about a place why is it talking about an eternal fire why is it talking about eternal punishment which it says in Matthew uh, Matthew 25 if you look at Matthew 25 it says uh, in verse 46, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into ever eternal life. Now, there's a contrast between everlasting punishment there and then eternal life. There's a contrast. It's quite clear, eternal life, eternal punishment. Now, you might say, someone might say, yeah, but it's not eternal punishing, continuous. It's eternal punishment. But just turn it around. If we changed eternal punishment to eternal entertainment, all right, eternal entertainment. So someone says you're going to get eternal entertainment, and 
A few weeks later, you get in this entertainment, and then somebody says, right, you've had eternal entertainment, it stops now. It would make no sense. If someone says they're going to give you eternal entertainment, you would expect it to go on forever. It says here, eternal punishment. So you should expect it to go on forever. To say that it stops, that's not what it's saying. It's saying eternal punishment. Just switch it to eternal entertainment, and you'll see that it doesn't work trying to explain it away and saying that eternal punishment ceases. It continues here. Okay. So these are many, many reasons I've looked at. Uh, I've looked at the fruit of these people. We've looked at the uh, historic. We, we've looked at the uh, the logic of what it does about holiness. It destroys holiness. Uh, we've looked how it destroys the deity of Christ. How it doesn't give a fuller understanding of the atonement of Christ and his sufferings. We've looked at uh, the Old Testament and how they misrepresent the Old Testament. That if you ask them about the fourfold chronology of annihilationism, you can't find it in the text. But if you look at the whole of the words of Sheol, it's where the wicked go in the Old Testament. It's a place where they go for uh, where they're dwelling uh, and being uh, in suffering there in Sheol in in the Old Testament. Taking Old Testament words out of context, not looking at the Old Testament as progressive revelation, but interpret it on a flat level. Uh, we've looked at how they take a verse out of context, like John 3.16 and uh, Matthew 10.28, uh, but even when they take these verses, they also cherry pick and only pick the bits that they want and not look at the clearer ones that can interpret the, the verses, such as John 10, uh, Matthew 10.28. So, these are many reasons why I'm not an annihilationist. But above all, the greatest reason why I'm not an annihilationist is because it's not the gospel. I am saved by grace because I'm a hell-deserving sinner. I deserve to go to hell. And Christ died for my suffering to save me from going to hell. And it shows how glorious and wonderful Jesus is that he saved me from the wrath to come. Annihilationism destroys that beautiful, wonderful message of the glories of Christ and what he did for us. And that's why I'm not an annihilationist, because it's a totally different gospel. And I could never believe it. And it dishonours my Lord and it dishonours my Saviour, who died for me, a hell-deserving sinner, and died for you, a hell-deserving sinner. It magnifies his great love and it shows you the terror of God's judgment because God cannot look upon sin and he must have sin out of his presence and he will punish sin because sin is rebellion against a great God why does it not bother me that people are tortured I tell you why because my God is an awesome God he is a consuming fire and he will not have sin in his presence so I don't have any issue with God. He has a right to judge. And he has a right to send me to eternity forever. In eternal judgment. He has a right to do that. Because I am a sinner deserving nothing. I am a sinner who deserves hell. I am a sinner I don't deserve anything. I am saved by grace. By undeserved mercy. And that Christ in his love shed his blood for me. And took the wrath that I deserved. And because he shed his blood and died on that cross and gave his life for me, I know that I'm saved from the wrath to come and I'm saved from hell and the judgment to be, to come. Romans chapter 5. After that, sorry, Romans 5. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith unto the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation, also knowing the tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts 
by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. When we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Christ bore our sin and took the wrath that we deserve. The wrath is eternal torment and he took it upon his himself. He took our punishment and died on our behalf that we could be justified and cleansed and washed and that we could go to eternal glory. And any other gospel, annihilationism or universalism is a, is a gospel from hell. It is a gospel from Satan. It will send people to hell. It will encourage them to live ungodly, unholy lives. It will attack the deity of Christ. It will attack the atonement. And it is a doctrine of demons. And it is not the word of God. That's why I'm not an annihilationist. But I believe in the old, old gospel. I believe in the gospel of Wesley. I believe in the gospel of Whitfield. I believe in the gospel of Jonathan Edwards. I believe in the gospel of the Puritans. I believe in the gospel of the Reformers. I believe in the gospel of the early church fathers. And if the church sinks into materialism, if the church sinks into secularism, if the church can't stomach hell, I will preach hell until my dying breath. For it is the great Lamb of God that took away the wrath that that I deserve and the wrath for men and women and I will preach it till the day I die whether I'm the last man standing I will preach the gospel and any man or woman who teaches any other gospel let him be accursed for he is taking men to hell God bless you that's why I'm not an annihilationist I spent five full days researching these people. Edward Fudge, Chris Date, brilliant debaters, brilliant scholars who, who pump their annihilationism. I looked at their teaching, I looked at what they said, I even read a PhD, I listened to four or five of their debates, I listened to their lectures, I read their articles. Then I read the scholarly articles of orthodoxy. I immersed myself in their teaching and their ideas and I listened to them. So this does not come by just ignorance. I've studied them. I've done this three times in my life. But I've done it again because my friend was being taken in by this stuff. There are degrees of judgment. If you study the Bible, there are parables that teach there are degrees of judgment, that there are certain people will be judged more than others. That, that destroys annihilationism. People are annihilated. Where did Jesus go when he died? The old Apostles' Creed says that Christ descended into hell and preached to the spirits that were died in the time of Noah. How does that figure with annihilationism? I studied their teaching and it's an evil doctrine and so I plead with you please 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 hold on to the true faith hold on to the pure Word of God hold on to the real gospel hold on to sound doctrine Stop being a child tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine where you're pushed from this side and that side and you're a child. You need to be a man and a woman of the word of God and you need to be feeding on the finest of wheat. Start reading the Puritans. Start reading great Puritan writers like this. Look, Thomas Brooks, Precious Remedies for Satan's Against Satan's Devices Read the Puritans. Get some Puritan paperbacks by the Banner of Truth. Get some Puritan paperbacks. Start reading the Puritans. 
Start getting into the Puritans and the pure word of God. Start getting strong in the word of God. Start listening to people like Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. Type his name in. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. If you want answers to your questions, go to Francis Schaeffer. Go to Labrie Fellowship and listen to the lectures by Francis Schaeffer, who believed in the doctrine of hell. He was an apologist. Go and listen to what he has to say and learn from him. Go and listen to Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. Listen to him for a year. Just... Get your pen out and listen to him preach through Romans and make notes. And you'll be strong in the faith. You won't be tossed to and fro anymore. But if you go to church and there's a nice cute guy singing and playing the guitar and a few girls jumping and gyrating and then they put a big video program up uh, uh, of something happening and, and you're all clapping and dancing and it's drums and guitar and you're all wearing cool t-shirts and, and it's all it's all cool and nice and you might go out and even give a bit of food to the homeless and you think it's wonderful but in the church you never hear them preach about hell you never hear them preach about sound doctrine what's happening is you're just becoming a cool carnal false Christian you've just become worldly minded there's no depth to your faith. You're not being taught anything at church. You're just being given stories and platitudes and you're just being hyped up emotionally. And there's no depth to what you've got. And so somebody comes along, some smart preacher, some clever debater. And because you've got no background, no grounding, no teaching, they start to lecture or they start to debate and you're just mesmerized and think it's amazing and, and because it panders to your questions of doubt and because your fleshly questions that are, are not of God anyway and because it panders to that you take it on board and you get yourself into a mess and you make shipwreck your faith and years to come others will join you and that your church will become secular and and more heresies will incur in your church. Will they deny the atonement? They will deny the deity of Christ in years to come. And your church will be totally secular. And it all started because you were playing drums. And you had the guitar. And you had your video programs on your, on, in your church. And, and you had these cool preachers who, who told you stories. And it was all nice and emotional. But you had never had a man of God who just preached the pure word of God in the season and out of season and taught you the word of God and taught it faithfully and taught you things that you didn't want to hear but was in the word of God and taught you to live a holy life, taught you to repent, taught you to flee from the wrath to come, taught you the pure word of God. You never had a man that would do that for you, but instead you had people who tickled you with stories and tickled you with emotion and tickled you with videos and tickled you with the guitar and tickled you with nice cool things. And you were taken down. Puritans, read them. Paperback Puritans, get them, read them. Your Bible, study it. And find preachers that will teach the pure word of God. Start with Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. Go through his Roman series for a year. Make notes. And you see me in a year's time and you'll be strong as iron. But I guarantee you start to mess with this annihilationism. And you'll be the weakest flip-flop Christian ever to walk the planet but if you go and listen to lloyd jones teaching i guarantee within a year you'll be a mighty warrior for god i guarantee if you start to read the puritans you'll be a mighty warrior for god but you start to listen to fudge and you start to listen to chris date and these are anni clever annihilationists who are very sophisticated and clever i can guarantee you will not have a fire in your little toe let alone your body there'll be no fire there but i guarantee you start to read the old books you start to listen to good preachers 
your faith will revive and you'll be strong and you'll be passionate and you'll be preaching on fire, you'll be teaching on fire, you'll be fired up and you'll be strong as iron. We'll finish now. You turn to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 16, listen to these words and hear them, and hear them strongly, hear them in your heart, hear them my friend. Philippians chapter 2, and hear this, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labor in vain. Verse 16, Philippians 2.16 Holding forth the word of life. Holding forth the word of life. It doesn't matter what secularism says. It doesn't matter what your emotions say. It doesn't matter what these clever debaters and itching preachers for your itching ears say. It doesn't matter what heresy comes against you doesn't matter how much you're persecuted hold on to sound doctrine hold on to the faith once delivered to the saints hold on and be strong and stand for the word of God and stand for true doctrine hold on don't buckle to your emotions don't buckle to these clever debaters don't buckle to the secularism in the church don't buckle to their Teaching and immorality. Be strong and hold on. And preach the word in season and out of season. Hold on. Satan and his end and his evil spirits are roaring like a lion and they're trying to take you down and they're trying to take the church now. They're coming in so nice, so sweet. Don't believe in hell. It's terrible doctrine. We've got a nice doctrine called annihilationism. It's really much biblical and much better, but it is from the pit of hell. Hold on. Hold on. Truth is not popular, my friend. Truth is not popular. But truth is truth, whether it's popular or not. Annihilationism's popular, but it ain't the truth.